Hi, welcome to this tutorial. I am Razvan and in this video I am going to show you how to handle the set path to the driver executable error. This is one of the most commonly encountered issues by the junior automation engineers. If you are new here, make sure you click that subscribe button. We got the error on the line number 12 because we are trying to create a new Chrome driver instance that requires a system property that points out the path to the driver, which in our case is the Chrome driver. Before we start, you should know that Java imports by default a package called lang that provides classes that are fundamental to the design of the Java programming language. One of these classes is called system. It cannot be instantiated but has several useful methods. In scope for this tutorial will be the set property and get property methods. To give you a bit of context, here is a simple Maven project in which I am trying to access the DuckDuckGo website and assert its title. There should be nothing new for us because we already covered how to create a simple automated test in one of the previous videos. However, I will leave its link in the description below. The solution to our error implies setting a property with a value that points to the driver's location. The property name depends on the browser that we are about to use. We will find out more details in this example. Currently, we want to interact with a Chrome browser, so the solution is to set a property called webdriver.chrome.driver. So we have to to set it just above the instantiation of the driver. System.set property that expects for a key and a value. Key will be the name of the property. WebDriver.chrome.driver and the second argument should be the path that points out the, the driver. Open up a terminal So in my case, I have a drivers folder that contains both Chrome driver and Gecko, Gecko driver. Because we are on a Linux operating system, we don't have to add the extension dot exe like we used to um, do on a Windows machine. So if you are working on a Windows machine, you will have to include the extension of the file as well. If we run the test, now it should do the trick. and the test passed. If we want to use the Firefox browser instead, we should follow the same manner, but instead of the property name webdriver.chrome.driver, we should use webdriver.gecko.driver and point to the gecko driver. Okay. And we also want to create a new Firefox driver instance. Remove the unused import. Run the test. and it passed. There is a problem though. Imagine the situation in which we are multiple engineers that work on the same code base. If I push this code into a git repository and one of my colleagues clones it and try to execute the test, then he will receive an error. That's because I used an absolute path 
into the system property, hard-coded, which is valid only on my local machine. Most likely, he has totally different path to the drivers. A solution would be to create a resource folder into the project structure that stores the drivers and instead of an absolute path, we can use a relative path to the project. Right-click on test and create a new folder called resources. Now let's move the drivers into the resources folder. Okay, we got the drivers under the resources folder in our project, so now we just need to find a way to replace the absolute path with a relative path. To do that, we are going to use system.getProperty user.dir, which will always return the working directory, which in our case is the uh, root of the project. So we just need to append slash src slash test resources slash geco driver run it's running it means that we found the solution and it's working. Test passed. Okay, now the test can be successfully executed by the other teammates as well because it will always point to the same drivers that are stored into the resources folder in our project. One more thing related to this line of code. It's mandatory if you are working on a Linux or a Mac OS machine, but it's optional if you are working on a Windows machine, because they have the possibility to set the path to the driver directly into the system environment variables. In one of the previous videos, I've showed you how to do this on a Windows machine. If you are interested, I'm sharing its link in the description below. I am also adding to the description of this video the URLs from where you can download the drivers for Chrome and Firefox.